Welcome, everyone, to the Supersize Phys Ed Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Carney, and I teach in Fort Myers, Florida, kindergarten through fifth grade PE. So welcome. I appreciate you listening in. And today I want to talk about projectors, using projectors in your physical education environment, classrooms, whatever you want to call it, learning spaces. I just think it's really, really important. And I'm going to tell you about it in just a moment. Here we go. All right, so projectors. Now, I, I guess I need to give you a little background. If, if you're not familiar with my situation, I teach over 100 children at once in a large pavilion outside, and we really don't have a, or we didn't have a projector unless it was for a rainy day because we'd go into the media center and I could put on something in there or the cafeteria if, if it wasn't being used for lunch. And so... I really only had it for rainy days or days that we were kicked out of our, our space for some reason for testing or, or whatever, um, just because we were kind of close to the classrooms. So I saw a lot of you know, teachers on social media using them in and, and really interesting ways and, and showing, demonstrating learning and, and just showing different ways uh, to the kids of you know, different techniques and, and things. And, and I really wanted a projector. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just want a projector because I didn't want to wait for a rainy day to show them, you know, a, a certain way to do an exercise if, if I want to show a video or a certain or a certain game, I guess I should say. Like, a, we, you know, when we introduced Chook Ball for the first time, like it was hard because the kids were like, what is this game? Where's it coming from? I have no idea what's going on. And so things like that, I wanted to show them and I, I didn't want to have to wait for it to rain. I didn't want to do a rain dance out here. And so... You know, it's, I wanted to figure out how to get a projector in here. And, you know, it's it's not easy because, or I didn't think it would be easy because it's hot out here. There's lots of wind. There's uh, the sun, you know, is, the, you know, from the glare is hard to see, I was thinking. So, you know, how can I incorporate this into, into my program? And so here's what happened. I went to my tech guy a couple of years ago and I told him, uh, I, I wanted a projector, you know. Um, actually, it started with our Dance Dance Revolution grant, or well, some of our grants. That was in the last episode, and we had a trailer, and I was like, okay, this is my new learning environment. We had like a just a separate trailer. We brought one class at a time, maybe two, and we could do Dance Dance Revolution in there, and then we could um, just do some uh, do a project, or you know, I, I was eventually going to put a projector in there. At the time, it wasn't there was none in there, and I'm thinking, okay, this this is my learning space. I, I got it. And then I lost that that trailer. They use it for uh, the first year. They use it for like um, the college students that nearby, like basically the student teachers, a place for them to meet. And then after that, it became the STEM lab, which I'm glad we needed a STEM program here. So that's good. So I couldn't have an inside space that I could use at any time. So. Um, again, he. I went to him and said, just, "How can I get a projector? Do I need to write a grant?" Again, last episode, or you know, I didn't have enough in my budget. So what can I do? And and he said, "Well, you're a classroom teacher, so you get a projector and six computers." I was like, "Really? <laughs> That's awesome!" So we turned my uh, office area into a, like a computer lab, which we were doing uh, portfolios or sportfolios in there for a year or two it was just that was really hard because we had so many kids and they were only able to get in there like once every couple weeks and um and then eventually we lost those computers went away and so now i only have three computers in here but we do use them for like uh students fill out google forms and sign up sheets for like ed camp and things like that or jobs for uh our chukball tournament so we do use the computer lab but not all the time so on the outside though let's talk about the projector on the outside, um, we got a projector on a like a rolling cart that I could bring out there. Uh, my tech guy got me some Wi-Fi. Um, he hooked it up in, to inside my like a long extension cord that hooks up inside my uh, my office area because the Wi-Fi is very spotty out there. And so we got a sweet hookup. Um, I was able to project it onto our whiteboard, which I had installed a few years prior to that. And so there it goes. We had our projector right and. Um, I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. I mean, I was able to use it for, you know, lots of things. And I, I, I want to give you specific examples. 
So one of the things I'm actually going to do it today is, you know, just for a different kind of warm up, I'll play some dance videos. I'll play our friend Ben Perillo, his, his dance videos, or so look him up, look up Ben Perillo uh, dance, P I R I L L O, I believe. Um, look up Just Dance Kids or Just Dance. Um, it depends. The little kids really like like the Gummy Bear Dance and uh, Just Dance Mario, um, things like that. I'll play Go Noodle or Cosmic Kid Yoga. Sorry, Cosmic Kids Yoga, I believe. And it's just a different way of warming up, a different way of exercising. Um, so in that aspect, I love it because I can just show it and I can go around and move around with the kids and kind of look at their form and just see how they're doing, give some high fives, encourage them along with my paras. So I just think that's a great idea. Um, the next thing is for provocation videos. Um, I got that from Andy Vasily. Just the, uh, I took a session from him. I thought it was awesome because he showed how to en- basically engage kids in the beginning or any time of the unit, the unit, but basically the beginning of a unit. It's a great way to engage the kids. Show a video. It doesn't have to be a 10-minute video. It could be just a you know, a two to three minute or five minute video on, you know, I showed, like I said, Chook Ball. Um, he, at his presentation, showed how uh, this guy named Lazy Legs um, could dance. I mean, he was paralyzed, I believe, or he had cerebral palsy, and he could, but he used his arms to dance with a, um, his, um, like, walking uh, canes. I'm, I'm trying to think what he used, but, um, but that got the, you know, that got us motivated to go out and perform a dance. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on curling. Again, I don't know why. I think I said it before. I love curling. I've never been curling in my life, but I love curling. And oh yeah, in the chess episode, I mentioned how I love it. It's like chess on ice. And I showed the kids. Kids are like, what's curling? Like at least half the kids. Because we live in Florida. They, this is mostly a Canadian or upper United States thing. And I want to show them curling because I was demonstrating target games and you know, telling them that this is a like a level two target game because it shows there's there's blocking involved and that's a whole nother episode, but just showing them videos of, hey, here's how it could be, and here's how things are, and here's why Chook Ball's awesome, because of this. And I remember showing them videos of uh, f- futsal, I hope I'm saying that right, but small, basically small group, or you know, small-sided soccer. And we did a whole thing on that, and, it was, and I showed them, you know, skateboarding and the creativity of, like, uh, the Lords of Dogtown, um, which is not an appropriate movie for them but I showed them a a clip of it when they're just learning how to get going and and just I just thought it was awesome just showing them that these really cool things are out there and there's true stories out there of some really neat things of how things took place so those are some of the ways provocation dance now we have animated gifs or gifs however you want to say it Um, you can project those to the board to show them how to do an exercise or show them how proper form of a kick or a throw or whatever you're doing so just a great thing there. I'd say definitely if you want to project, like I project my, the, my Comic Life 3 uh, things I make, my creations, my posters um, for like Plickers or Solo Taxonomy, and they could put the magnets on the board as I'm projecting. So these are all ways of using projectors in PE, and I think it's, it's very important to have them. I mean, there's so many different uses for them, and I could also project my phone or my iPad to the to the board and show them um, one of my favorite apps is coach note and it's an older app but it, you could demonstrate a game on there and or how to set things up like how here's here's how here's the setup of this game and you know set it up go and just so many uses for a projector and i really feel like it's it's something you need so now it's time for our cowbell tip of the day All right, everybody, your cowbell tip of the day. Whoops, it wasn't going to stop there. Your cowbell tip of the day is don't settle for no. Get a projector. It is necessary to demonstrate your learning, to show your thinking, for the kids even to come up and they can demonstrate their learning. Um, it's, it's a different style, a different way of you know for different students to learn instead of you just standing up there and talking or drawing on a board. So everybody learns in different ways, so it's something just something different. It's, you know... It's a 21st century PE teacher thing. It just, you, you need to have it. You just, you need to have it. No excuses. If you, you know, I mean, I know you, people might say, well, my principal won't let me. Okay, ask. Ask your principal. Ask even the parents in the community. You know, we have a group, a Facebook page, a parent Facebook page. 
you know, you could ask if it's, I don't know, I have no idea how much they are. Maybe it's a couple hundred dollars. If you put together a small presentation, it doesn't have to be standing up or maybe just a small little, you know, PDF on why you need a projector. Um, you know, ask, put, put that together and, and try to get it going. You know, or you could write a grant if one's available in your, in your uh, area that time or look into uh, your budget. Or, you know, if you have a budget and you want to set aside some uh, money for projector, please get one. It is very important. It doesn't matter if you teach, or, teach inside or outside. And by the way, I didn't mention it. I also added to it. I um, recently, uh, a uh, my tech guy brought out a, I told him the glare was kind of getting to me outside. So he brought a smart board uh, on a rolling cart, an old one that doesn't work, but I, I got the I got the screen and it's much, much better. So you can tinker with it. You can make adjustments, but get a projector is very important and that is your cowbell tip of the day all right everybody i want to thank you for tuning in i appreciate it so much i will put a picture of my setup on my website uh, supersizephyzed.com it'll be in the uh the link will be in the the notes of this podcast so please check it out uh, you could always email me at dcarney1017 at gmail.com. Don't worry, it'll be in the uh, again in the notes. So take care, get a projector, and I will talk to you soon. Great job.